Hey, how's it going, everybody? So tonight, this is what we're gonna be doing. It's gonna be an object NAT and a twice manual NAT, and that's gonna be done in a Cisco SA um, 9.5 virtual firewall. And then router two and router three are just two regular Cisco routers. Um, so I went ahead and configured a um, router two and router three, so they're all ready to go. So you can see. Uh, I think they're FA. Yeah. So um, this is gonna be the outside zone, and this is gonna be the inside zone. And let me go ahead and make this a little smaller, and move it to the side. Pull up my secure CRT. So, so you can see, OSPF is also configured just so we can have reachability, and I also enable that in the loopback interfaces. Um, so same as in Router Three. So. As far as the ASA firewall, I'll show you how the configuration looks like. So Geek00, you know, just put the name of the of the zone. In this case, that's the outside interface, and then security level is going to be zero with the IP address. The same goes for zero one, with the exception now this is the inside, and then the security level is going to be a hundred. So the way that uh, this firewall works is um, traffic from higher security level. To lower security level is going to be allowed by default. Uh, however, not the other way around. So traffic originating from the outside trying to go to the inside is not going to be allowed by default unless there's a um, exception such as an access list applied to the out, uh, outside interface inbound, which is what you know um, n normally you'd find out there. So, but for simplicity, I went ahead and configured. An access list, or you know, I haven't, so let's go ahead and do that. Access list is going to be allow all, permit IP any, any, and I'll go ahead and apply that um, both outside and inside interfaces. So, access group is the name is allow all, and it's going to be in interface outside, and the same goes for the inside. So, now I'm just basically saying I'm just going to allow everything, which is fine for our, uh, you know, for our purposes. So that being said, oh, and just so you know, um, just in case you're wondering, uh, OSPF is the same configuration, no changes there. Um, so what I was, like I was saying, traffic originating from the outside to the inside is not going to be allowed by default. We just overrode that with the access list. Now, uh, as far as traffic originating or traffic traversing two different zones with the same security level, that's going to be also denied by default. How, however, you can change that behavior. Issuing this command saying security traffic permit inter interface. And that way, same security level traffic is going to be allowed. So, um, so this is what we're going to have. The first one is going to be an object NAT, which is the most straightforward uh, and you know normally used for that particular case or that very common case where you have internal resources such as a web server or you know whatever you know piece of network equipment that you need to access remotely. And you, what you do is that you configure a NAT translation so that the IP address, uh, the internal uh, IP address or internal address, is going to have a mapped outside address. So that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, that means we're, that means we're going to configure a source NAT uh, or a static source NAT um, translating 192.168.13.3, which is this interface right here, to a public or outside address of 64003. So let's see how that looks from the CLI point of view. Uh, first of all, since this is an object NAT, um, basically what we're going to configure is an object. And it's going to be a type network. And I'm going to name it uh, something easy to remember, or something um, very explicit, such as the, the number of the IP address. So 192.168.13.3, and this is a slash 32. So that's very straightforward. Now. Now this is just the name of the object. Now I'm gonna say that this object is particularly a host with a IP address of 192.168.13.3. Now this is what I have so far. Right, so that's an object um, with a host of 192.168.13.3. And now I'm still inside the object. I'm gonna do NAD. It's gonna be a NAD from inside to the outside. And then I'm gonna say static, and at this point I could use the uh, the interface uh, of my outside translation. So 
basically would be using the IP address of the outside Geek00 physical interface, but I don't want to do that, of course. So I'll go ahead and say 64.0.0.3. So now what I'm doing right now is just mapping my 192.168.13.3 to, to an outside IP of 64.0.0.3. And I can do show wrong net, and that's what I have right now inside this object. Now, show that detail, and this reads like this. So, for traffic uh, originating or coming from the outside, going to uh, from the inside, going to the outside, uh, with the source IP of 192.168.13.3, go ahead and translate that to 64.003. Now, um, like I said, most um, most scenarios, th this doesn't get utilized like this, but rather um, traffic comes from the outside. So. In, in that case, this reads like this: um, traffic traffic destined to the map IP address of 64.0.0.3 is going to be translated to a destination of 192.168.13.3. So that means uh, when you're coming from the other way around, then it, you know you got to read this backwards. So this is this is no longer the source, but actually the translation. So I mean the destination. So if I'm destined to go to 64.0.0.3. Now that's going to be translated to 192.168.13.3 and we can go ahead and confirm that at this point because like I said we have reachability right now um, but even before we go ahead and do that we can use the packet tracer utility here and I'm going to say I'm going to input a traffic or you know a packet from inside and it's going to be a TCP with a random port and the sort oops TCP and the IP address. So my IP address, like I said, is going to be a source of 192.168.13.3 and with a random port of 2000. And my destination is going to be 64.0.0.2. Again, doesn't really matter at this point because at this point because the translation only occurs for uh, one pair. So or I should say either the source. IP address gets translated if it's coming from the inside to out, to outside, or the destination address gets translated if it's coming from outside to inside. So in this case, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing inside to outside, and do I gotta say a port number? And the end result is that this is gonna be allowed. Now, notice the phase one is the access list check, which is good. Um, the reason we don't Route based on NAT is because this is not a, this is not a destination based NAT, but actually a source based NAT. Uh, we'll see what happens when we do this flow right here from left to right instead of from right to left. So, but for now, phase four is the NAT. So this is where we apply our NAT rule here and see how the 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 source address gets translated to 64003. So now the end result is that's going to be allowed. Now, if we were to do that for the other flow from left to right uh, we would have to do something like um, a source could be well first of all this would be outside my source could be 64002 with a random port of 2000 and my destination is going to be 64003 um, based on how we have this configured so and an and a uh, destination port of 23 Oops. Packet tracer. Oh, I forgot to say TCP. So now, um, notice how the phase two is the actually the on translation of the on NAT, where basically the ASA knows that in order to route this traffic, he needs to send it out to the inside interface. So see how the NAT diverts the egress interface to the inside. So that basically says that this is a destination-based translation and not a not a source-based translation. So the end result is gonna, that's going to be allowed as well. And one uh, very nice way to confirm that is from router two, we can go ahead and tell NAT to 64003, which is the mapped. Again, let's go ahead and do a show um, NAT detail or show translate. Or you know, have we, well, yeah, because this is a, um, a static NAT, and that's that's another uh, interesting you know uh, key or point to know 
that because this is a static NAT, uh, that's the only reason that traffic is allowed to be generated or to be initiated from the outside, I should say, because the static NAT is always going to be present at the, in the NAT table. So that that's because that's that's why the outside traffic is allowed to initiate the translation. So as you can see. A NAT from the inside is going to be translated to 64003, and this again, this reads this way, and it's, uh, the other way around from out from outside to inside. Then my destin if my destination is 64003, then that's going to be translated to a destination of 192.168.13.3. So from router two, if we were to do a telnet from to 64003, regardless of the source IP, because again, this is a um, an object NAT and not a twice NAT, um, we should be able to see that our destination address got changed to 192.168.13.3 and that's why we can get to router 3 in this case. Cool. And you know if you were to do show users and wait just a little bit we'll be able to see that our source address never changed. And 64002, so it never changed. It got never, it never got translated. Now, um, so that's basically the most, um, you know, use case for the object NAT, uh, at least in my experience. So um, now, on the other hand, the twice NAT is a little more, um, you know, a little more complicated, um, and it, 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 you can figure that in, in a slightly different way. So. You actually go ahead and configure that from the global uh, global uh, configuration. However, we still need to create some um, object groups because basically you would configure this with the command NAD and something like inside, outside, and then uh, source static, and basically you got to specify an object group. So for that, let's go ahead and so we don't waste too much time. I'll go ahead and paste in some of the object groups I already have and then we'll just walk through them real quick. Show run object group. So basically we created a router 3 loopback real address which is again the real IP address of router 3 loopback 123.33 and then that's gonna have a mapped address of 64003 which is what we already saw um, for the object NAT. Now router 2 is gonna have a loopback address which is the real one so this is the object group for the real one which is uh, 12222 and then the mapped address is gonna be 192.168.13.2 so uh, I'll go ahead and configure this and then you know I'll do a show NAT and we'll see how that reads so for now it's going to be NAD inside outside and it's going to be a source static and then what's the name or uh, what's the name of the object group for my real source my real source because this is an inside this is an inside to outside uh, NAD my real source is going to be routers 3 loopback real which is that's the one that I want to get uh, that I want to translate the loopback so my map source is going to be router 3 loop or router 3 loop mapped and then the, then then the next um uh, next part of the of the nat rule is going to be the destination and again that's going to be a static as well and what's my mapped um, destination so my map destination is going to be router 2 loop mapped and then router 2 loop mapped and then my real destination is going to be router 2 loop real so that's fine it says that it's overlapping with my object NAT rule and let's see how this looks how that looks from this command point of view show NAT detail so notice how this uh, basically you know differentiates between the two between the manual NAT policies and the auto NAT policies so Cisco calls this the um, for the object NAT Cisco calls that the auto NAT so 
Um, and the the main reason that the manual NAT is called like that is because you get to say you get to specify which one comes first. So actually, when you create, when you you know, when you enter this command, you can actually oops, you can actually put a number here, or I think it's here, for you know the index of this particular line statement or NAT statement. Because they're get, they get evaluated from top down. So um, back to this. So this is how this reads: um, a NAT translation from inside to outside with a source address of one at uh, one twenty three 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 is going to be translated to sixty four zero zero three only if the destination is one ninety two one sixty eight thirteen dot two, which gets translated to one twenty two two two. Okay, so. If that was a little too fast, uh, we'll we'll do it again. So if I have a source flow of traffic, uh, or I'm sorry, if I have a, a flow of traffic with a source address of 120.333, and that flow of traffic is destined to this 192.168.13.2 address, go ahead and translate the source address to this one, and go ahead and translate the destination address to this one. Okay. So. Even you know before doing this, before looking at it from you know from the other way around, from outside to inside. Before doing that, let's go ahead and confirm that this is working. So um, we can do it with the packet tracer, or let's go ahead and do it you know straight from our router three and router two. So basically, this is saying go ahead and um, initiate a connection to this to this IP, sourcing it from this one, and see what happens. So I'll go ahead and do a telnet. To 192.168.13. was it? 13.3, and use a source interface of 64. I'm sorry, 123.33. Right, my loopback. So probably three loopback. Let's see what happens. So you know, if this was, if this is correct, then my source address should have changed to 64.003. And of course, I already know that my my destination actually got changed to 122 to 2 because I was able to get to router 2, right? I'm I'm here in router 2. Or oh, you know what? Okay, router 2 was inside the other the other connection. So let's go ahead and do it again, right? So uh, this is router 2. And this is router 3. I'll go ahead and Telnet to 192.168.13.3, which is this one, or oh, you know what? 13. Oh, that's my mistake right there. So destination 13.2. So this is oh no, it's right. Yeah. So I gotta change this to 13.2, and I'm gonna use a source of the loopback. So this should work now. Cisco, Cisco, and notice I'm in router two, so I already know that the destination it did get it did get changed to 122.22, right? Or get trans or got translated, and my source address uh, was 123.33 based on this source loop, source interface loopback zero, and that should have got translated to 64.003, and that's correct. So again, we can confirm this from the packet tracer utility or packet tracer command and it's going to be an input from the inside to um, with a TCP and a source address of 120.333 with a random port and a destination IP address of 640. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, 192, 168.13.2. 1.2.16.13.2 right here and a port of 23 and again the end result is that this is going to be allowed so um, so that's good we confirmed that that's working um, now let me do the show net detail again so notice how the manual net is actually on the top one um, that means that still, if I have traffic destined to 
192.168.13.3 or you know what uh, did we use the same yes so we use the same check check see what happens when I initiate traffic from the outside to the inside with the destination IP address of 64003 so um, this is what's gonna happen is if my source address is a an IP address of 12222 that's going to be translated to 192.168.13.2 but if I don't have a source, you know, if the source address happens to not be this one but, you know, another one, then the one that's going to be matched is this is NAT statement, not this one, right? Because they're basically using the same, uh, you know, mapped IP address for the source, this one and this one, but this one is not matching on anything, so this is not a twice NAT. So what that means is that when I initiate traffic from router 2 with a destination IP address of 64003 and a source IP address of 122.2.2, then this NAT statement is going to be matched. But if I initiate traffic from router 2 again, you know, uh, with, a, with a destination IP address of 64003, but a source IP address different than 122.2.2, then this one's going to be matched. So let's uh, confirm that from the CLI, right? So again, if I'm going to tell net to 64003 and I'm going to use the source interface of my FA00, which is this one right here, then the one, the translation that should match should be this one because this one doesn't have a source IP address or a destination IP address in this case. So, and that means that my source address is not going to be translated, right? So when I go and do this, and I look at my show users, I should still have my source address of FA00, which is 6400.2, right? And that's correct. Now, if we use a source address of my loopback, now I should see that I still get to router 3, but now my source IP address should be um, my mapped address, which is going to be um, 64. I'm sorry, 192.168.13.2, and that's correct. Right here. So that's basically how. Well, that's basically the difference between the object nets and the twice manual nets. Um, I hope you liked it and have a good one.